Well, welcome to Race Face. I'm your host, Rod Wortham, and I'm here with a guy that we picked up out on the highway. Well, I, I normally am up there, but today I'm down here, but we're going up there where I normally am to talk to our special guest for the night, Stephen Parsons. Did you get all that? I There'll got it all. a quiz on this later. So he didn't tell you who he was. This is Tom Baker from Race Chaser Online, and it is always about going up to Mooresville, North Carolina to meet with Tom, but we happen to be lucky today because he's actually joined us live in the studio. He's actually going to be here for two or three days, so he's really come down to kind of straighten us out, I think. But <laughs> I know I know we've got a special guest that's setting up in uh, in Mooresville, North Carolina. Yes. I got that right again, up in Nor Mooresville, up North Carolina. Up in Mooresville, yes. So uh, we're going to go up there right now, and we're going to be joined by Stephen Parsons. Stefan is uh, the son, of course, of Phil Parsons and Stefan A. NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series late model competitor. Stefan, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you talk a little bit about your own personal background in the sport. Uh, well, I've really been around the sport my whole life. Uh, I mean, when I was born, my dad was still racing in what was then the Bush Series. Um, he ended, he retired when I was about three years old, and he's been uh, broadcasting for the Camping World Truck Series ever since. But um, I started racing in 2010. I started racing Bandoleros at the summer shootout at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I did that for, um, I believe, three years. So I started racing Legend Cars in 2013, ran those for two years, and I've been running late models since 2015. Talk a little bit about uh, the success that you've had in the late models and what you're doing this year. Um, we've had a lot of fun this year. We, uh, I've actually st uh, been working with the group that I started racing Bandoleros with when I first started racing, uh, which is Kendall Sellers, Jeff Sellers, AK Performance, that whole group. So it's, uh, it's really, really cool to be able to work with them again. Um, it brings kind of brings back old memories, but uh, this year we've uh, we kind of started off on a slow slow note. We're uh, have it's a pretty big learning curve for what we're trying to do, but we've been uh, we've been slowly gaining on it. We past two races we've been racing at Myrtle Beach and we raced at Orange County this past weekend, and we ended up fifth at Myrtle Beach and second at Orange County. So we've uh, we've been improving for sure, but uh, we still want to get to victory lane. Well, Stefan, I got a question for you. What is it like growing up with, um, you know, your father being so well known and, you know, being definitely a, a, a big driver in the, in the Bush series back then? I'm actually old enough that I can remember that. Um, <laughs> so am I. So, you know, what's it like well. growing up in that, in that family? It's, it's really cool. Uh, it's just, like I said, it's, I feel like it's, racing's been in my blood since I was born. And my dad has been there every step of the way to help me. And it really, you can't, the knowledge and wisdom he gives me is irreplaceable. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't be where I am today without him. And uh, it's, he, he really keeps me in check a lot of times. And he's been a really good gauge of my appreciation for the past of, and the history of the sport. And uh, I feel like, like I said, without him, I feel like I wouldn't be even close to where I am today. I'm just really thankful to have him in my life. Well, that's awesome. Are you in high school or college? Talk a little bit about where you're at schooling-wise and what you're looking forward to. I'm sure that you want to continue to climb the racing ladder. Mm, yes, sir. I, uh, I actually just finished my freshman year at UNC Charlotte. Okay. So I'll go back, uh, I'll go back to school in August. I'm actually studying marketing. But uh, with the, how the sport is today, marketing is such a huge part of our sport now with sponsorship dollars and stuff like that. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to use that to my advantage and help find partners that uh, fit my brand and my personality and that I can help, uh, help grow as I grow on the racetrack. What, talk about what you believe you could bring to a potential sponsor who would come on board and uh, help you to maybe take that next step and go K&N or ARCA Series Racing. Well, I, I really believe I'm, I, I bring my own unique personality to the table. I, I really have an appreciation for the history of the sport. I, uh, I, almost every week I go back and watch 
some old races and races, some old VHS VHS tapes we have in the basement at my house, uh, Winston Cup Series and Bush Series. So I really have an appreciation of how the sport used to be, and uh, I, I feel like our our sport today needs more uh, needs more personalities, needs more Carol Yarbroughs and Bobby Allisons and Neil Bonnets and people who just had their own unique personality. And I really feel like I, I, I can bring that to the table for any uh, any sponsor that would like to come on board with me. And don't leave Benny Parsons out of that list, that. too. Yeah, I was waiting for you to mention <laughs> Benny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uncle Benny, you know, he he's, was one of the pioneers of the sport, really. He won the championship in 73. But uh, I think a lot of people remember him more for his broadcasting career. And uh, I know him and um, Ned Jarrett. Bob Jenkins, you know, that 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 group right there is what a lot of people look back to and really remember when they remember the history of the sport. And uh, I, I wish Benny was still around to be able to see where I am today and my racing. But I, I really, uh, again, really thankful that he was also in my life. I learned a lot from him as well, even at a young age. Yeah, well, he's watching you every weekend. I can pretty much oh, assure sure you of that. Is. So. I was going to say, I can tell you a quick funny story there, uh, about one of those brushes with greatness that you have. in your. Uh, I, my sister and brother-in-law took me to Pocono. It was the first Winston Cup race I ever went to. I was about eight years old. Took me to Pocono in 1977. And Benny was staying at the same hotel that we were. And... We came off the elevator to go to, to breakfast in the restaurant there, and, and Benny was kind of in a hurry, I think, and kind of rushing toward the elevator. I looked up and ran smack dab into him, just literally ran into him. And, uh, of course, you know, oh, you okay, son? Was, you know, and, uh, and I said, yeah, I'm fine, and I didn't know who he was. So he, he got on the elevator, and we kept walking, and my sister looks at me and says, you know who that was, don't you? I said, no. She said, that was Benny Parsons. And he ended up winning the race the next day, I'll have you know. So I'm taking partial credit for that. I should say, maybe you were his good luck charm. Yeah, it was his good luck charm. That was my brush with greatness when I was uh, at Pocono that year. But, yeah, he was a great guy. And he had a, a style of broadcasting that was just so easy and down home, you know, and very passionate about the sport. And he helped a lot of younger drivers, too. Absolutely. You know, so, Stefan, I got a question for you. Give us, if you're looking in your crystal ball, where do you see yourself going in the next one year, two year, and three years down the road? What's your, what's your kind of your, your goals and your agenda over the next three years? Well, over the next three years, I really hope to be in the, uh, in the Camping World Truck Series. That would be, I can't even explain how, uh, how grateful I would be for an opportunity like that. But, um, at, you know, one thing I've always said over my whole racing career is no matter what I'm racing, I really want to focus on doing the best I can in whatever vehicle or whatever series I'm racing in. So right now we really focus on the late model, but um, we're trying we're we're trying to get some stuff together. We've had talks with a few people about arc races and stuff like that, but not nothing too serious. But I would really love to be able to progress through the Arca series, the K&N series, and eventually the Truck series in the next three years. So there you go. If you're an ARCA team owner, K&N series owner, Camping World Truck series owner, guess what? We got somebody that you need to look at. Not only are you getting a great personality, a great young man, a good driver, but you're getting a, a lineage of history Absolutely. that comes along with that, which, you know, um, you either got that or you don't. It's not like you can go out and exactly. buy it or create it. So uh, everybody pay attention to this young man. I think he's going to do great things. I know we got just a couple minutes left. On this first segment, Tom, do you have any more questions for him before we uh, come back down, back down to Florida? <laughs> back down to Florida. Yeah, I'd, I'm curious where we can look for you the rest of the season. Are you running the entire Cars Tour, or are you running kind of just an outlaw, hit and miss type schedule? What is What does the rest of this season look like for you in the late model? Um, well, we've we've kind of been picking and choosing so far, picking and choosing so far this year. Uh, our next race will be June 24th at Orange County, which is a Cars Tour race. And uh, we, we definitely want to try to hit some of the rest of the Cars Tour races, Tri-County, Orange County again. Orange County is probably one of my favorite racetracks. Yeah, it's a good um, track. And then we'll probably run weekly shows. I really like running down at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Uh, it's a great cr crowd down there. They have a great car count and really great people who run the racetrack as well. 
Um, so that's definitely on our schedule too. And of course, we'll, once we get towards September, we'll have Martinsville and then again, the Myrtle Beach 400 towards the end of the year. If the fans want to keep track of you, how do they follow you? Tell us social media, whatever website, whatever you've got. Um, they can follow me on Twitter at, at Stephen Parsons 98. Uh, I also have a Facebook page for uh, my racing. It's Stephen Parsons Racing, as well as an Instagram, which is uh, Stephen underscore Parsons. Sounds like a winner. And uh, I know that you're looking forward to hopefully stepping up sometime soon. You certainly have the talent. You've got the, uh, as Rod said, you've got the lineage, Stefan. We appreciate the opportunity to talk with you on Race Face. And hopefully maybe we can get you back on the show a little later on after a big victory. I really appreciate that. That means a lot. And thanks for having me. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, we're going to take a short commercial break right now. And we're going to be back with in studio, Tom Baker. And, and Jacob, if you're watching out there, you know what? I know that, I, that you had to pay me to get him down here, but it's a good thing, man. We're really excited to have him here. And so we're going to be right back in just a couple moments. Welcome to Race Face Brand Development. I'm live from our Race Face TV set. So let me take a few moments to explain who we are and what our mission is. You might be asking, what is Race Face Brand Development? We are all about helping young drivers get noticed while creating a brand. And that is extremely important in advancing their motorsports career, no matter what current level they are competing at. I see a lot of young talented drivers watching races who may have more talent than the race car drivers that are competing. I believe there are two reasons for this. Number one, they don't have the private funding it takes to compete at that level. Or number two, they did not create a brand that would attract sponsors to provide the needed funding. That's where Race Face Brand Development fills the gap. Unlike other stick and ball sports, racing is different. It takes a tremendous amount of investment to be able to excel and reach the next level. If you're the best baseball pitcher or an outstanding quarterback, You've got colleges recruiting you, and then if you're talented enough, the pros will seek you out through their drafts. In this scenario, the only amount of investment could simply be a baseball glove and a pair of spikes. But motorsports isn't that way. Parents, you know you can only take your child so far. The money is going to run out, but the brand will stay forever. Here's how race face brand development works. We go through a get to know you process with our drivers. We find out everything there is to know about them. We find out what their interests are, what their goals are. And one of the first steps that we do is we sit down as a team together and we literally lay out a career blueprint. Where are you today? And where do you want to be one year, two years, and even three years down the road? Then we start to make smart career decisions with the amount of investment that's available at that time. We also identify the amount of investment that's going to be needed through sponsorship dollars. Keep in mind, no one can guarantee sponsorship dollars, but it has been our experience that the best way to increase your odds is to have a strategic plan that includes creating a professional brand that potential sponsors would want to partner with. Next, we begin to assemble the assets needed to launch the branding process. This includes a professional website, logo, and a social media strategy that is focused on creating a fan base. Here we obtain vital demographic data that will assist us in attracting the right partners. The process doesn't stop there. One of the next things we do is to begin coaching our clients on how to walk, how to talk, how to present themselves to the media, and how to be the most effective spokesperson for a potential sponsor. All of this is extremely important. Often families get caught up in the mindset of only investing in racing equipment and running as many races as possible. Although this is very important, our many years of experience in the industry has shown us that branding is equally, if not more important, in the developmental process. If your branding isn't part of your strategy, and you're looking for a competitive advantage in the marketplace, I encourage you to reach out 
to us at Race Face Brand Development and let us provide you a free consultation on how we can help further your driver's career. I encourage you to take a look around the website and check out our staff. Find out more about NASCAR development driver specialist Mr. Lauren Rainier and our driver coach Tom Baker and also take a look at the rest of our staff. I think you'll be very impressed in what you see. Well, welcome back, everyone. And man, what a great little first segment that was with Stephen Parsons. I mean, coming from a legendary family, that's just, it's got to be kind of kind of a cool way to grow up, you know? Well, I'm sure it is. You see a lot of these second and third generation drivers. We had Thad Moffat on the show a little while back, of course, uh, you know, uh, a part of the Petty family. And I mean, it's got to be exciting for those guys and, and gals, and yet at the same time, I know that most of them really just want to do whatever they do in racing on their own merit. It's great to have that name, but the, the recurring theme that I hear from all of those kids is we're happy that we have the name, but we don't want that to be the only reason we succeed. Harrison Burton, another example of that. They want to be successful on their own merit, and I think that's... That's admirable and very humble kids, most of them are, which yeah. is neat. I, I thought the coolest thing when we had Thad Moffat on there again, if you don't know who that is, that's Richard Petty's grandson. Yes. It's him basically talking about being, you know, very young and, and couldn't figure out why everybody kept coming up to the table in the restaurants and asking for his grandfather's yeah. autograph. That that was kind of like, that was pretty cool. Well, and of course, you know, Richard will sign no matter where he is or what he's doing. You know, right. he's always been like that. So... Uh, yeah, I'm sure that has to be a very unique experience for them. You know what? I, I think that the one thing that I picked up from Stefan on the, on the show earlier was that he was talking about marketing. Yes. He was talking about branding. And so we're going to spend the second part of our show tonight, and we're going to literally talk to you guys about uh, the marketing and branding side of that because it's extremely important in your racing careers. It, it's just as important as having a fast car or running a lot of races because as we all know the sport is so expensive now that yeah. sooner or later you know you, you've got to have that sponsor if it's if you're going to move up the ladder because you know more than likely if you're like most racers mom and dad's money is going to run out sometime during this period and you really got to 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 create that brand well you do and as you said almost everybody has a glass ceiling you know some some may be higher than others, but almost everyone has sort of an upper end limit. This is all mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or whoever's providing the funding. This is all they can spend. So you have to be able to put together the right tools and the right situations to build that brand and make yourself marketable to sponsors. And a lot of young people and families kind of look around and say, well, gosh, how do I do that? And that's part of what Race Face University is going to be about. And it's part of what Race Face brand development is going to be about. Race Face University. There's a clever idea. It's a great idea. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think you're probably the guy that should talk about it. But it's, <laughs> it's a very exciting program, honestly. And I think it's going to be a, a way to make training, branding training, accessible to a lot of race teams that really can't afford to spend thousands of dollars. It's a, a series of videos and webinars that we're putting together that's, that are going to be designed to help you to develop a base understanding of what marketing and branding are all about and how you go about putting yourself in position to be marketable to a, a sponsor or as we call them, motorsports partners. That's exactly correct. So what we did is this, this idea started probably about 60 days ago, maybe a little bit longer, probably in both of our minds, probably years and years ago. Yes. But, you know, really bringing it to fruition here was the fact that we, we felt like that we had a good combination. We had Tom, who's been doing a lot of driver coaching for how long, Tom? Almost 30 years now. Almost 30 years yep. of experience, okay? I've been in the marketing side with NASCAR for about 27 years now. And then, of course, our third amigo, uh, Mr. Lauren Rainier, who is in the driver development side of this, has been doing this for 25 plus years, and he's got an, an amazing track record. So the three of us, we got together, we created what was called Race Face Brand Development. 
And that's basically the portion of our business where we can actually go out there and brand the, the drivers. Yes. And we kind of do all the work for them. And we've got some really great drivers. We've got young Jesse Love, a 12-year-old, that's running the... Uh, um, the midget series out in California, also the the junior uh, late models, the junior late models yep. for uh, fifty one fifty energy drink, and then we've got Sam Mayer from up in Wisconsin that's doing late models out on out on the uh, the East Coast, and Ryan also Vargas. and he's doing the summer shootout right now. Yep. We go back out to California. We've got Ryan Vargas, um, who was the NASCAR. Wendell Scott Trailblazer Award winner last year as the number one diversified driver, and then we also have what. I think the most diverse driver in the country is Sheldon Creed. Yeah. And you know, Sheldon's racing all over the country in super trucks and different things like that. So we started to get the idea that there was a lot of young drivers out there that needed help. They needed help to be able to figure out kind of what you teach them, Tom, kind of how to walk, how to talk, how do I present myself to a sponsor? How do I approach a sponsor? How do I put a blueprint together? Because, you know, again, racing, even at the young ages of, you know, some of our guests have been, I think the youngest we've had on the show has been seven. Yes. You know what? Few weeks but ago, it's yeah. expensive at that age level yep. to get, to get, uh, to be able to go out there and compete. So we really wanted to reach out, come up with an affordable program that everybody could afford. And so with that, we've created Race Face University. And it really also, <coughs> when you think about the marketing and branding side, that's only a part of it. I mean, we talk about leadership. We talk about working with the media, how to do a, a, an interview properly, depending on who your audience is, whether you're doing it at the track or away from the track, on TV, on the radio. It's all a little bit different. So we wanted to put as much into this package as we could. Obviously, you're not going to get everything you need, for uh, for this in this particular package, but we wanted to put as much into this as we can, and it's a great way to introduce yourself to the concepts and get a lot of knowledge in a very small amount of time. And I think that this is something that's been missing from motorsports driver development and driver training for a long time. And uh, really excited that you have opened your facilities up here and uh, allowed us to come in and, and put this together because I think it's going to be a really, really beneficial program to racers at all levels of development from go-karts to late models to legends, cars, bandoliers, wherever you're at, quarter midgets. It's really for everybody. And it isn't dependent on a NASCAR track necessarily. The information that's going to be in this package is going to be useful to you no matter where you're trying to go. Absolutely. Explore. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and you know, Tom talked a little bit about our facility. So that was one of the key elements in us being able to do this is um, the Race Face brand development facility right here is actually housed inside the MNO Business Center. And so here we've got 10,000 square feet. We've got a 3,500 square foot studio, which is where we're at right now. You're only seeing a small little portion of it. Yep. Uh, we got a podcasting room. Uh, we really have everything, web design, graphic design. Uh, we're doing mobile phone apps. Did you catch that? Brand new. Mo brand, brand new mobile new. phone apps for you racers. And we're going to be rolling that out here within the next seven days. I'm telling you, Tom, that's going to be cool. Can you imagine being out there and being able to give apps away to your fan base and then being able to stay in connection with them? Because that's just another way to be able to brand. Absolutely. And I'm honestly surprised that nobody at Motorsports has jumped on this before, but I'm happy that they haven't That's because right. <laughs> we get to be a trendsetter here at Race Face, and we're pretty excited about that. The apps are going to be a great tool. Already seen uh, the first one that's being developed now, and it is going to be able to do all kinds of things for the racer, for the sponsors that that racer has. It's really a, a nice tool, and it's not going to be really expensive. It's going to be very reasonably priced. So again, most everybody should be able to afford to uh, add that to their marketing toolkit. Right. And you know, the neat thing about that is, is that once you've gone through the Race Face University, you feel like that you're, we're going to call them certified. Yeah. You're going to be more um, comfortable, more educated on how to go out and actually talk to, you know, a sponsor, um, you know, with the mobile application, if you're a part of that, 
then you're going to be able to go out and say, you know, Mr. Sponsor, look at what I can do because I can put my sponsors in my mobile app. Right. And then I could connect out to them, a way for you to be, be able to build your own fan zone. And again, sponsors look at that. They look at your digital footprint, how many people are following you. Um, are you behaving in your digital footprint? Absolutely. That's going to be part of the training too. Yep. We're going to have some great motivational parts that are going to be in there by a gentleman by the name of Steve Hopper. And, and you guys are not going to want to miss that. Steve is an awesome motivational speaker. We're going to have social media training in there. Um, pretty much we're going to cover everything that there is, you know, not like you said, not in total detail. It's going to be, it's going to take, you know, some work from, from the racers that are out there that become a part of that. But I'll tell you one thing, when it comes to the sponsorship side of things, you are going to have the competitive advantage if you participate in this course. It's eight weeks long. Um, I think we're starting pre-enrollment next Monday, which I think is the 19th. Yep, 19th. The 19th, we're going to start pre-enrollment, and you're going to basically be able to go to uh, racefacebranddevelopment.com, racefacebranddevelopment.com. We'll make sure James gets that on the screen before, um, before we cut out tonight, but there you're going to be able to pre-register. The class starts on July 1st, so you're going to want to make sure that you get plugged into that, make it a part of your your mission this summer to come away, not only by having a great racing season, but to be able to walk away from this going, man, I feel much more educated, comfortable about where I'm going. And, and guess what? Here's the neat thing about this is, you know what? Parents, it's not just for the kids, but it's also for you. It's for you to be able to be able to set down and put a blueprint right. together to say, here's where I, my child is today. And here's where I want them to be. And how do we get there? And that's going to be a big part of that. Yeah, it's important to develop a strategy. It's like any other business. If you want to grow the business, you have to have a business plan. And that's what Race Face University begins to point you toward is how to develop that plan and what all the ingredients are that are necessary to be plugged into that in order to be successful. Again, our show's just about done for the night. Tom, it's really nice to have you here in the fun. studio. Yeah. Um, uh, Jacob, thank you. Stefan, thanks for being a guest. Remember, Race Face University. Make sure to find us, Race Face uh, Online TV at Facebook. Like our page, share it with your friends, and we'll see you guys back here next week with some more exciting news about Race Face University. Have a great weekend, and go out and support your local tracks.